Over the last five or so years, since the MPPF, viability has become much, much more important. Um, before then, we did have viability testing, um, but only for affordable housing on the, um, following the Blythe Valley case, and developers started challenging affordable housing targets. One of the big improvements of the MPPF was to require local authorities to consider all of their policies and the impact on viability together. So the cumulative impact of all the policies, which on the whole, that has been a, um, a real improvement because local authorities need affordable housing, infrastructure, open space, all these things together, they need to be thought about. And you can't just ask for more and more, you have to understand what you're asking for. The, the MPPF is very helpful in the um, plan making process. It says nothing about development management. It's not mentioned at all, which is unhelpful. So what has happened is developers and local authorities read what it says about viability in plan making and have translated that into development management which isn't entirely satisfactory because it's a, a, a different situation. All it, the MPPG, the planning guidance, does differentiate between the two, but really all it says in the development management situation is that you should think about site-specific matters, which is, to a certain extent, stating the bleeding obvious, because what else can you do other than look at the site-specific? Viability is used as a lever to get a better planning consent, and it might not actually be the issue for the developer. If you have 40% affordable housing, and you're building a row of 10 houses, and you start with a market house, then you have every other house is an affordable house down the, um, uh, down the line. It is almost 50% affordable housing, which is quite difficult to design. So the consultation has got a section on viability. I'm slightly surprised there's a section on viability because viability was not a big issue in the housing white paper, and in the uh, uh, SIL review, viability wasn't a particular issue. There were some comments, but nothing major. Uh, and when you look back at the LPEG report, it wasn't a large uh, subject uh, either. We've got four pages on viability. The, the core of the uh, questions on viability are about deliverability and this overcome. Um, uh, causes, it says it causes complexity and, sun, and uncertainty um, of delivery, which I can understand. But I really think that most of the uh, problems around viability are because planners are not doing what the MPPF and the PPG ask. Um, and if one runs through the questions, uh, I think that comes out. Uh, the first question, do you agree local plans should identify the infrastructure and affordable housing needed uh, and how these will be funded and the contributions developers will be expected to make? Well, isn't that what we've been doing for years? Uh, that is a requirement. For SIL, you have to set out the infrastructure requirements. You have to set out the funding gap. You have to think about other sources of funding. Um, so surely that is being done anyway. The needs for affordable housing have to be assessed. Um, there are proposals within the document um, about looking at that, and I'm sure that will simplify things, but there's nothing new in what is being required there. Um, so I don't think there's anything to say on that point, particularly. We're required to do that anyway. Next question. Uh, in reviewing the guidance on testing plans and policies for viability, what amendments could be made to in improve current practice? Well, the, we have these discussions at local plan inquiries where promoters of large sites are making the case that their sites are deliverable. If they're not deliverable, they shouldn't be in the plan. And those sites are normally um, 
for those sites, one starts with the plan-wide viability study, then there are discussions with the developer, one ends up with a statement of common ground, uh, which hopefully gives the inspector a nice warm feeling and he puts a big tick beside the site and off you go. Six months later, development management discussions, all those previous um, debates and all the previous information seems to be thrown out of the window and it's back to square one. Well, that shouldn't be happening. The information that is presented for the local plan should roll forward. Now, there might be a late discovery, like a new set of slip roads onto the dual carriageway that's going to cost £12 million. Pounds. Well, if the site's got to pay that, there will have to be some flex in the policy. But the flex in the policy should only be in those types of uh, situations where you've got remarkable new information. And if developer, if local authorities are not pushing everything to the absolute, absolute limit, there'll be flex and cushions within the uh, viability to allow sort of modest changes anyway. So, uh, I think all that's been, the question 13 uh, is really just implementing the current guidance rather than coming up with new guidance. Do you agree where policy requirements have been tested for their viability, the issues should not usually need to be tested again? Well, obviously, that's the whole purpose of the um, plan-wide viability testing. The only viability testing at development management should be uh, relative to the viability testing at the plan-making stage. So why is the site so very different that it cannot bear the uh, affordable housing or infrastructure requirements that it was assessed to be able to um, deliver six months ago or whenever the plan was made. Um, and that's really what the PPG says now. And I think that if planners um, did viability work in the context of the um, PPG and the MPPF and didn't use their imagination and didn't try and think of new complex ways of thinking about viability, uh, viability would not be the issue that it gets blown up in, into. If we only thought about competitive return, abnormal costs, why is the site di uh, different, there wouldn't be the problems that we have. Well, they are engaged throughout the process. Um, every viability consultation that I've done for the last five years, we've had housing associations there. If they don't respond, we just get on the phone and ask them the questions. What is the cost of building affordable housing? How much are they paying for affordable housing? What are the costs of connecting to services? Those very fundamental questions. We have never not had um, positive feedback uh, or constructive feedback from housing associations. Sometimes they have to be asked several times, but it's not an, an issue of being unwilling to uh, contribute. It is sometimes a resources issue, but it's, they do contribute. There are challenges in getting um, water companies and uh, the NHS and people to, uh, to feed into the um, IDPs. But sometimes planners have to um, be a bit more robust and where firm information isn't available, uh, use the standard calculators uh, that are available to assess the need for doctors. Are there enough doctors? And if the NHS, if the fire service, whoever, don't ask for the, inf uh, the infrastructure at the time of the plan making, well, perhaps they've missed the boat and they'll have to wait until next time round. Someone has got to take responsibility. In my view, developers should be aware that their information should be um, published as part of the decision making process.
to sum up everything on viability, it's, um, it's not very complicated. It is only adding up and taking away. Um, where it falls down is where people deviate from the guidance. If you use no imagination, I know planners are bad at uh, not using their imagination. Um, then stick to the MPPF, stick to the PPG, and actually what we've got could be really good.